here with Paul Hughes. He's the biggest prospect in MMA these days. Um, you know, Paul, welcome. Uh, Eric Richter, New York Post Sports. Uh, you have a huge fight coming up with Asia McKee. Give me a little insight into how you're doing, how training camp has been going for you. Um, yeah, we'll start with that. Look, brother, life's good. I am very, very excited for this opportunity. This is, it's, it's everything I've been working for, you know, since I started MMA about 12 years ago. I dreamed of nights like these, and I dreamed of being on the world stage and proving myself as one of the best guys on the planet, and I've got that opportunity now. You were a hot prospect when you came out of Cage Warriors. Um, you know, in theory, this would profile as a massive step up in competition for you. AJ McKee is former champion. Um, you know, are you uh, – I would assume that you're looking forward to an opportunity like that to prove yourself against one of the best in the world. Um, but what would you say about – you know, you're a betting underdog in this fight for the first time in – in recorded betting history, right? You haven't been a betting underdog. Uh, the closest that you were to being a betting underdog was October of 2021. And let me make sure I get this name correctly. Uh, you fought uh, Morgan Charrier um, in Cage Warriors' a unified title fight. And that was uh, almost a pick em. This is the first time you've been an underdog pretty much ever. Uh, any thoughts on that? Um, it's It feels good. I like it. To be honest, I like being an underdog. It gives me uh gives me that little bit extra drive of proving people wrong, proving people wrong, you know. Um, it's good. I like it. Absolutely. Uh, so you know, Adrian McKee's coming off the win against Clay Collard. Um, a lot of striking. Uh, he's been doing recently. In terms of grappling, I would venture to guess that there's a good chance that he will grapple you a little bit. Is that something that you are concerned about at all? Not concerned. I'm prepared. Um, I do believe he's gonna shoot on me early. I'm looking forward to sprawling on him and talking some shit. <laughs> but uh, look, I'm prepared for everything. I I really think I'm one of the best guys in the planet, and mm -hmm. I'm just gonna show that. It's not right. Yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to it. It's gonna be a really fun fight. Uh, is this is your pay per view debut? Obviously, you're on a huge card. Um, is there anything that like specifically that gets you excited? Obviously, you know, it's a big pay-per-view card, probably the biggest pay-per-view card in PFL history. Um, you know, anything that, that, does that do anything for you? Does it give you a little extra excitement? Um, you know, this is huge for the company. This is huge for the promotion. It's huge for you. Yeah. I mean, this is such an, a huge opportunity for me to, I mean, to be on a Francis and Ghani pay-per-view, one of the biggest cards in the entire year, a real showcase opportunity for the PFL, which I'm sure they are going to be putting a hell of a production on. There's a reason they wanted to make such big fights. Um, it's it's such a huge opportunity. And it's, as I say, it's everything I kind of dreamed of as a kid coming up in this sport. And it's an opportunity I'm going to grab with both hands. And I just, I just at this point, it's just pure excitement. I love it. Um, and what is like something that you look back on at this time? Like now that you're in the PFL, you're in one of the major organizations in MMA. Is there anything that you look back on and is like, this was the turning point for me? Maybe this fight, this you know moment, this round, I survived this round, and then I, um, or or maybe I starched this opponent in the first round. Is there anything that you look back on at this point? Is like this was the moment that I realized that this is this was me. This is who I am. Well. Two, two moments. The first one was when I beat Charrier for the interim Cage Warriors belt. That was me. I mean, 24-year-old kid set this dream, just coming back from a two-year injury layoff, said, look, I want to be the world champion. I want to give everything to this. When I first got that belt, that was absolutely a moment that was like changing. But the the most important, I think, is after that, when I fought Jordan Vucenic in a title unification bout that fight was it was probably to this day the biggest fight in Cage Warriors history one of the biggest in European MMA history a guy that I had already fought interim title versus um, current title and I I absolutely demolished him it was 50-43 on one of the scorecards and I also had a lot of adversity just before that fight and I went in there thinking I just need to give a good show to myself. Like I knew I could win, but I had a lot of adversity beforehand and I went in there and I really did make it look easy. And from that moment, 
I just said to myself, never, ever, ever doubt yourself again. You are a competitor. And when you need to put it on, you always do. And from that moment, I've I've truly felt unbreakable. I love that. Yeah, that, you know, I when I, I interview like Mike Bisping and like Mike Bisping says that when he, um, like when he realized that like he could be a world champion is when he, you know, almost got knocked out, almost got knocked out by Anderson Silva came back into that fight. Anderson Silva kind of walked off, did the walk-off, the Sean O'Malley walk-off, and then, uh, but did work out for him. And then Bisping ended up coming back winning that fight. And, uh, you know, he says that that moment was the biggest moment of his life because that moment won him the Luke Rockhold fight, you know, the next year when, uh, you know, UFC called him and was like, hey, like, you know, I got to I gotta jump onto the street and just start running. Uh, so, like, that moment for him was was really big. So, um, yeah, I always like to ask that question just to see what in uh, into your head of like what that mo- what the, this moment means to you. So if you beat AJ yeah. McKee, assume assume that you do. What does that moment mean to you in your in your head? How do you play that out? Because a lot of a lot of uh, positive visual visual uh, visualization uh, is a lot of you know a lot of MMA. So how do you how do you view that? I guess I'm just gonna have to wait and see how damn good it feels at the time. What I could foresee is, as I just talked about, this kid that is now on the world stage, that's give everything to this sport, that's give his entire being to be in a position like this. And I I know I'm going to smash it out of the park. I know, I know that I'm going to get him out of there. I know that I'm going to finish him. And when I do, that's when everything changes for me. That's when I go from local prospect to potential worldwide superstar yeah we saw that happen right we saw that happen with fellow countrymen uh happened with connor right and he was at the bellator uh championship series fight that you had uh last time and i I know you said that that meant a lot to you um in the moment right that meant a lot to you that he was there um you had talk at all afterwards after that moment did you guys interact at all or did you kind of just get out of dodge yeah we had a moment as soon as I got out of the cage, we talked for a, a short period of time, more so an assessment of the fight. Um, I was just, ah, I was too crazy tonight. I was like, I was scrapping too much, but he was like, ah, I loved it though. I love that you wanted to fight. Like you, you showed that you, you're, you're a dog, you know? So we had a brief moment. Um, he wished me all the best. I thanked him for inspiring me. Um, it was very cool. It was a very cool full circle moment for me. Is there any thoughts of going? I know you're training in, in Ireland still. Um, is there any thoughts of, uh, you know, maybe like doing some cross training with um, with him in, in Ireland? I, who knows if he's going to fight? But, you know, two really big Irish fighters in, in the same division. It would make sense to get you guys to train together. Is that something that you guys have thought about or talked about? It's not something we've talked about. I mean, obviously, I would never turn an opportunity with Jim O'Connor McGregor. Um, I do think he travels quite a lot on his yacht. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't got much. a yacht. potentially but it's funny i was actually training with chandler when uh when they were supposed to fight because i do some of my training camps out in Kilcliffe, and Mm -hmm. he's uh i've got friendly enough with him so it's kind of funny um yeah but look if the opportunity arised i would absolutely take it no yeah i think everybody would like to see that sparring footage right uh i think that would be a pretty fun two strikers two irish Irish strikers fight, uh, uh, match it up. Uh, what's like your dream matchup in a fight? Uh, if you like could fight anybody anywhere, any time period, who, who's like your dream fight? Easy answer. Paul Hughes versus AJ McKee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, we wish granted it is coming. It is coming fast. Uh, Paul Hughes, AJ McKee, huge fight, uh, prediction. Uh, do you have one for the, for the bout? I will knock him out within two rounds. Within two rounds. Okay. Okay. All right. Hey, I uh, I hope that you are correct. I, I wish you all the best, Paul. Um, yeah, any, anything closing that we got for me, uh, I'm ready to hear it. Look, I'm going to shock the world. If you've never watched me before, make sure you tune in because this could be the start of something special. You know, I'm just a, a, a normal week kid from rural Ireland and I've dedicated my whole life to get to a position like this and I think it's going to pay off